Hi, I'm David Goforth with Cooperative Extension Successful Gardener. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're actually in Charlotte at the Urban Ministry Center and we're talking with Don Bokelhide here about the Urban Ministry Center and about the gardening that they are doing here at the Urban Ministry Center. So Don, it's good to see you again. Yeah, it's good to see you, David. <laughs> Tell us a little bit, first of all, about the Urban Ministry Center, uh, some of the different things you've got here. Okay, we're a program for the homeless. We think of ourselves as the open door for homeless people in the Charlotte area. Um, anyone at all can use for a good meal in mid midday, for counseling, for uh, showers, uh, a place they can wash their clothing. We don't have overnight accommodations, but we do run something called Room in the Inn, where people during cold weather can stay in a church or a, a university. So we have all kinds of, of services. We have a volunteer counseling program where people can come and get uh, help with paperwork and uh, whatever they have to deal with, Veterans Administration. And then we have some unusual programs, they're outreach programs. Homeless Helping Homeless tries to organize homeless people together for their own betterment. We have a soccer team, we have an art program, and we have the garden. And these aren't for making happy homeless people. They're a way to plug in with people, get to know them as people, listen to what their story is, and then try and plug them into other services and uh, with some grace and some help, help get them back on their feet. Sort of interesting that to see a garden as a ministry, though, and say so your objective here is not to actually produce something, it's actually to help somebody. <laughs> it's true. We're very proud of what we produce, and we do a good job. This is a, uh, an organic garden, and we um, uh, have done a good job with the soil. We, and in various seasons, are very productive. But you're right. It's like a school garden. You, you're in this so that you can help people. The most important thing is to get them engaged and get them talking. And in the garden, you, you'd be surprised what, what happens. Uh, people open up. Have you got like a, some success story you can share with us on that? Oh, there's so many of them. Well, uh, there was one kid in the early days when they, 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 we have a new building that was built on the site of our old garden. And in the old garden, this kid came, he was missing some teeth, he had scraggly hair, and he was hostile. He, was, he couldn't have been 20 years old. He dragged this guitar around with him, missing some strings, and he'd just sit and glower and never play the guitar. Wouldn't talk to anybody, wouldn't get any help. After three weeks of sitting at the edge of the garden, finally I hear the guitar strumming. It was out of tune. I turned to him and I said, you know, you're always out here, we never talk, uh, uh, but I, I, can I tune your guitar for you? And he kind of grunted at me, handed me the guitar. He was back the next day, didn't talk that day, but the next day, he started talking to me. He talked and he talked and he talked. And so uh, the next thing you know, he's having me down on his hands and he's helping me a little bit, do some transplanting. And the next thing you know, we got him hooked up with one of the counselors. And that I'll never forget. And he actually got homed. Wow. And it just, the garden is, it's a place for healing, it's a place for patience. You know, all the Charles Lewis stuff about how gardens are healing in yeah. a deeper way. I think that that's really true. That's the you truth see that to that, yeah. yeah. Uh, tell me about some of your uh, crops that you've grown here. One of the more unusual ones, I think, was the sweet potatoes last year. You had a bed of sweet potatoes. That's exactly right. Well, as, as you know, growing food in this part of the country is something everybody ought to do. It's great fun, and you can do it in three seasons, at least. We had peas in this bed to begin with. When, when, when the peas got finished in beginning of June or so, they just burned up, that soil was ready to go for sweet potatoes. So we followed with sweet potatoes. The soil was nice and warm. They grew on into, oh, it was, it was after Halloween when we finally pulled them up. It was so warm this year. And we had a wonderful crop of sweet potatoes. We cured them over there in the old train station and made pies, sweet potato pies <laughs> with them. So that was terrific. Tomatoes are a big hit here, collard greens. We, because of the drought, we stopped uh, uh, growing this fall uh, because we didn't feel it was right to irrigate this. But we had last year collard greens in these back two beds and had six cuttings. And oh boy, are they popular. <laughs> I imagine so. Uh, I know you've got a compost pile here. Uh, tell me a little <laughs> bit about what's going on there. Well, compost, you know, doesn't need to be made in a container. I'm sure you've taught this many times. You build the pile and, you know, Felder Rushing's two hints. Make a pile someplace, don't throw that stuff away, and let it sit. 
that brings up another point, sort of how does this work get done? Now, some of the uh, people that are coming to the urban ministry do some of the work. Yes, we, we call the folks who come to us neighbors, as in love your neighbor. This is a ministry and uh, we are here for those people. And surprisingly or not surprisingly, many of them know a lot about gardening and agriculture. They grew up on farms. The, the people who come here uh, are great to work with, but they usually aren't going to be people that come every single day. We want them out working. We want this to be a place that they can come. So I rely on volunteer groups, often from churches, Hands on Charlotte, to come and do big tasks for me. I work with scouts to, to, to get things built. Um, we have uh, really no budget, but we do work with the entire landscape. Uh, we also hope in the future to have some uh, training in green jobs. Um, environmentally sound landscaping is something everyone talks about, but it's hard to find people who can do it. Maybe some of the people here who are able-bodied can learn it in our landscape. Mm -hmm. Now, and you said your budget was zero, which, uh, I mean, obviously- It was less than zero. <laughs> less than zero. <laughs> there was a board meeting this week. Maybe I'm gonna get, be, get above zero, but no, I, I work with grants and I, you know, the Fisker's company, with their orange thumb grant. They, they helped us out one year. Um, uh, NC State, through a cooperative extension has helped us out. Um, uh, through uh, uh, a community gardens program that uh, they were doing at NC A&T. Okay. So, um, but, uh, oh, most important of all, the Women's Impact Fund, which is a group of Charlotte, very visionary Charlotte businesswomen, came and looked at the center. Um, they chose another very good program, a dental van, but there was a group that liked the garden well enough, um, led by Kathy Izzard, who uh, funded this funded the garden program for a year. So it, we, we're always on the lookout for help. Don, one of the things I've noticed here in the garden is uh, a couple of bottle trees. And I have to say, I think they sort of fit <laughs> in this area. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. Um, we try to beautify the whole landscape. The bottle tree is the southern version of the stained glass window. And uh, we got our bottles from our recycling program, which also provided the compost for us. You notice they're painted. And these are a little different than your regular bottle tree because they're, the artists inside will paint them special colors. They also write poems and put them inside. Supposedly that's an old African custom. I was in the Peace Corps in, in Togo and we saw this. You can put a poem inside the bottle and then the spirit world, it's kind of like a way to get to your ancestors with a message. Wow. So there are poems actually inside some of these bottles. Okay. And we have, um, out in the front of the center, we've got a, a Native American prayer, uh, uh, what they call a medicine wheel. We try and reflect all cultures here. But the bottle tree is, that's Southern culture. Okay. <laughs> Don, tell me a little bit about this Remay product here. I really like this Remay. We've got a little microclimate here that it's almost like we're in zone eight. <laughs> anyway, um, this big wall behind us holds in heat pretty well. And so we were able to get several cuttings of collards out of this last year. This year, um, we didn't plant in the fall because of the drought. However, a farmer friend of ours had extra plantings of lettuce, and so we put them in. It's like a school garden. We did the best we could. It was a little bit spotty in terms of the way that they uh, are growing, but the people who put them in are tremendously proud of themselves. They will come up and visit their lettuce. Now, what we did is we took this light fabric, this Rime fabric, and put it right over the top without a hoop. It does two things. It holds in the heat, and it also keeps the critters, which we have here, mostly rabbits, from coming down and eating the young plants. Um, what we're going to be doing next is taking wire hoops, ten, number 10 wire hoops, and lifting this up off of the plant so they can grow under it. It's a terrific uh, technique. Uh, I, 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 I believe you use it with lettuce. and uh, We've done that before, yeah. The uh, other question I've got before we finish up here, are y'all actually eating the tops off this uh, collards here? Well, <laughs> the collards we planted in the fall on very wide centers uh, so that we wouldn't have to irrigate them. We, so we would try to see what happened. They are edible. Um, and we'll take a bite out of them, see if they're sweet enough. <laughs> and if they are, um, we, they will end up in the soup pot. I don't think we'll be actually harvesting collards. Uh, okay. uh, the, the Chinese ha harvest the, the flower the off The flower that. buds, I saw the flower buds gone. Is that rabbits taking them or um, what? Those are partially rabbits and partially people doing stir fry. 
Okay. Uh, maybe rabbits do stir fry. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don, this has certainly been an interesting uh, experience for me to see what you've got going on over here. Well, come on, I can see it's in the spring when we got a little more. Listen, growing. if somebody wanted to get in contact you, how could they do that? We have a website, www.urbanministrycenter.org. And you can go on there. There will be a site for the garden blog. Uh, I'm always talking about what's going on out here. This changes dramatically over the year. And uh, we'd love it if people would come and be a part of it. Well, thanks, Don. Thanks, David. Come anytime. <laughs> if anybody wants to get in contact with Don, uh, go to his website and get in touch with him. Or if you've got any questions about horticulture, give me a call at the office. And until next time, plant and plant for a better world. <laughs>